people often turn away from what's possible or, or, or from actual career choices because they don't know how. How am I going to make that a reality? Gary, why do you say talent comes second to marketing for anyone trying to make it in Hollywood? We can never underestimate talent. Craft is everything, but it's not everything. Meaning, fundamentally, Hollywood is, 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 is not a meritocracy. It's not always the best talent that rises to the top. It's not the best projects that get financed and, and, and produced and bought. Um, it's, it's often based on who has the best relationships. Um, so while it's really important, and I trust that most creatives who really want to make it in the business are steadfast, they're committed, they're studying, they're writing multiple scripts, they're, they're always improving. It's a, it's a process, it's a learning. So you're always getting better at your craft and I, and I, I don't underestimate the value of that. So talent's important, but talent that is um, not connected up with some form of um, effective marketing idea, an action plan, some kind of a roadmap to make sure that you and your body of work get noticed. It can't live in isolation. Talent has to be have a have a platform. It has to be announced to the world and marketed. And I think that too many writers. Um, tend to ignore the, the, the business side, the marketing side, in favor of being very uh, committed to their writing and, and, and hoping to get an agent. Being, in other words, being passive in the face of what in any other industry would be considered perhaps unrealistic. So I think talent is not to be underestimated. It's, 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 um, it's why we're all here. But the talent needs, um, it needs a companion energy so that you are not a best kept secret. Does that have to do with a biz dev versus the sales mindset? Does that have anything? Yeah, I mean, I, it, 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 certainly I think in a way it does. The, so the, the, you know, the, the salesperson is, is someone who's working against quota within a given time horizon in there. And they're looking for a specific result, which is a sale. Their, uh, their whole approach is geared toward uh, getting, getting the sale. Um, the, the, biz, the biz dev person has a totally different job definition. A different, there's a different prism or lens that they're looking through. They're looking, it's like the difference almost between, in the old version, agency and management. One was like income driven, commission driven, and the other was commission driven, but it was really about developing the talent, longer term mindset. In business, the biz dev people, people with that responsibility set, are really looking at how do I nurture and develop the future business? And that's not about making sales today. That's about getting to know their business, about getting to know their customer, about getting to know their needs, their wants and how we can develop a mutually beneficial relationship. It's being fundamentally other focused. It's not about what I need today. It's about how can I help you now and into the future. Let's, let's, let's create that pathway so that I lock in a sense of loyalty and a deeper understanding and then we can build together. So there's an, it's, it's investment minded as opposed to sales minded. And I've used that analogy for, you know, certainly for creatives, like, you know, be curious, be a business development person, build relationships, build toward a future without the urgency, without the anxiety. There's no stress in that. There's no need in that. Now it's just a gift of genuine curiosity about the other and not keeping yourself a secret, Share who you are and what you do and why you do it, why you care. What, what was the first moment when you knew you, you had to have a create, you know, go down this path and be a creative professional? Christy Dryling, she yes, wrote LOL. Yes, Christy's a dear friend. Yeah, and I found her book um, accidentally uh, somehow and it was really fascinating to read, especially about her upbringing. And she yeah. talked about a poverty mindset. And I'm curious how we can all fall into that trap and maybe not even realize it. Yeah, well, I think it's very common. Look, I think that we're unfortunately 
I, I won't say miseducated, I'd say undereducated. I think there are, you know, in our system, in our culture, there are a lot of what I consider really um, essentials that we're simply not, they're not in our curriculum, that we're not taught. We're not taught financial literacy. We're not taught mindset. We're not taught success principles. Um, it, 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 it hasn't yet found its way into the body politic that is our educational system. Um, and I think that a lot of people do fall into a poverty mindset. They're, you know, it's, we, are, um, we are fed a steady diet through the internet, through the media, class, traditional media, what have you, of, of uh, sensational stories, because that's what sells. Uh, and it's often fear-based. Uh, and fear is powerful medicine, and most people are not immune to it. There's very few people who can see over that hedgerow and stay centered and stay present and stay committed to their vision and, their, and, and, and what, what's theirs to do. Um, and we see that, you know, COVID, we see it, you know, like there's a uniform response amongst most people to bad news, and we see it all the time. Um, and I think it sort of degrades our sense of manifest destiny and our vigor and our determination of, and, and belief in what's possible. Applying the poverty mindset to being active, pitching, working on projects, not giving up, because that poverty mindset can permeate into other areas. It's not just financial poverty. It's also sort of lack of opportunity, the belief that you can't actually make something happen. It doesn't have to actually mean monetary value. Right. So yeah. how, how, do we, how do we get ourselves out of that? Because some mm -hmm. people could come from some, you know, a stable middle class environment or upper middle class. They could probably still possess that poverty mindset, being told maybe you can't make a career out of this. Find a find a stable position where, you know, yeah. there's a pension. Very few jobs still have pensions, but people often turn away from what's possible or, or, or from actual career choices because they don't know how. How am I going to make that a reality? And my understanding of life is it's really not that important to understand how. What's really important is to understand what you want. Be really clear about what you want and very clear about why you want it. And at that point, the how is, you know, like a collaborative effort between you, the universe, and seeking out the people who know the how. They've been down that path. And finding your mentors and finding your collaborators, finding your partners, whatever it might be. But it's, if you can't go in with that clarity, that story that's really true and clear and persuasive about it, mostly to yourself, if you believe it, others will believe it, right? That's, that's really persuasive about what it is that you want, why you want it, um, and what you're willing to do for it, that you're committed to it. The how just becomes the gap that needs to be filled in with information and relationships. And that's all available. It's the determination. And I think a lot of people get, get stopped before they get in the game because they don't think it's possible. They think it's too hard. They don't know how. They have all these ideas because it's easy not to believe in yourself. It's easy to stay in your comfort zone is another way of saying it. Um, it's, it, it takes a certain amount of courage to step out and do the thing that you fear others may judge you for. And by the way, that you may fail at, right? Um, so it's easier to be safe and stay in your comfort zone and not take that risk, but the, but it's really not. Because we only have one life. And regret is a terrible, terrible thing. Questioning yourself is a terrible, not believing in yourself is um, not being willing to take risk and bet on yourself first. Um, it's like chopping off an arm. You know, it's just not a good way to treat yourself. Um, and, and if you surround yourself with, no matter what your background, and I granted, it's not an equal playing field. I think all souls are created equal, people are not. People's backgrounds and experiences are so, so, so different. And, um, but I think we do have, we, we see so many examples of it. That kind of courage that makes people rise above a circumstance, say, I'm so committed to this. 
And no matter what my experience or what my background, I am going to find the people who are more successful, who are in the direction I want to move in. And I'm going to go there. I'm going to make them my target and my compatriots and what have you, my mentors. I think it, it just, you know, most people aren't natural born leaders and they don't necessarily. I read a book years and years ago called The Slight Edge. Jeff Olson, I think, is the author. And in that book, there was really, it's, he talks about habits, but the thing that makes it come to mind is there's a moment in the book when he talks about a sociological study that was done that determined that by the age of five, which I is what, first grade, that by the age of five, a child has on average heard the word no 40,000 times. And he has heard, that same child has heard the word yes 8,000 times. So literally five times the gravity holding that belief system, that human being down as there is a yes energy uplifting or elevating or thinking, oh, these things are more possible for me. And um, that really stuck, obviously it stayed with me. I read that book years and years ago because I thought, my God, the math of that is really a heavy weight. So I think the, one of the keys is really take yourself out of your, the, the other comfort zone is don't necessarily settle for those who are your current tribe or community or the people you hang with, right? Like really make a decision that you're gonna get with people who are the doers, not the dreamers, with the people who will believe in you, not the ones who will judge you. Like really consciously say, I deserve better. And I don't want to say it's like fake it until you make it because I actually think everyone deserves it. But if you're willing to go after what you think you can grow into, what you deserve, increase your capacity, find the people who are going to say, yeah, we support you. We not only don't judge you, we encourage you.